Good morning and welcome to my floss tube channel. I'm Celeste and this is Celeste Creates. I wanted to take an opportunity this morning to uh, film a little tutorial for you. I've had a lot of people ask about my um, tomatoes, my stuffed fabric tomatoes. I have given away a few. I've sold a few and I have a lot of fun making them and so I um, thought it would be fun to do a little tutorial on how to make these. They're super easy, really fun to personalize, make your own, get creative with. And so join me and we will learn how to make your own stuffed fabric tomato. I want to start with the supplies that you'll need to make our fabric tomato. First of all, you're going to need some fabric. You need a strip of fabric that measures 12 by four. This is your tomato. Have fun. Pick out your favorite fabric and you need a four by 12 piece. You'll also need two fabric scraps or squares. These measure about four inches square so that you'll be able to um, trace the tomato top, the star for the top of the tomato. So you'll need two of those and I'll show you how we'll use those. If you decide not to do the fabric, you can also do a felt tomato. You will need one square of green felt to do the star top to your tomato. Um, that's fun as well. This is just um, felt from Hobby Lobby or Joann's. You can use wool felt. I do love using the fabric though. There's so many fun combinations that you can do. So fabric. Uh, you will need a star to create the top of the tomato. You're going to need some thread. This uh, is the thread that I have been using. It is Coats. This says extra strong. It's an upholstery thread. And I got this at Joann's. Uh, when I first started making some stuffed items, uh, I believe it was my strawberries I used to make. Um, I would use regular quilting or sewing thread and that's fine, but I'm really happy with the strength of this thread. Um, it never breaks on me when I'm trying to pull it tight to gather the tomato and um, so I really highly recommend this um, upholstery thread. You're also going to need some red. Um, yarn. You could use yarn. This is what I have used so far. This is a red chunky um, floss or chunky thread um, from Lori Holt. And you can get this on um, Fat Quarter Shop. So this is a chunky thread. I love this. You could also use a full six strands of DMC floss in a red color. You could use the whole six strands. You can use yarn, you could use pearl cotton, um, but today we'll be using this chunky thread. You're going to need a button. A rather small button is my preference. Um, the one on this tomato is actually even smaller. Uh, the reason being that the bigger the, t the, uh, the button it's going to pull the star of the tomato further down when you're um, putting your tomato together. So a smallish button. You're going to need some fabric scissors and possibly a smaller pair of scissors for snipping some small areas. You're also going to need some turning tools. This is a clover um, turning tool that you can buy. I forget the name of these, but I use that for put, uh, turning corners and making nice points. You'll need to do that on the points of your star. Or you can use a crochet hook, or this is the little wooden turner that comes with um, your bag of polyfill. You're going to need a glue gun for just a little bit at the end. Then you're also going to need something to stuff your tomato with. I like to add a little bit of dry um, uncooked rice at the bottom of my tomato. You don't have to do that, but it's a um, 
it's just a little extra something to add some weight to the tomato. And then you're also going to need some regular polyfill to stuff it tight. So both of those items are going to be handy. And I believe that's all. So with that, let's get started on our tomato. The first thing we'll need to do is take your 4x12 strip of fabric and fold it right sides together so that the short ends match. And we're going to go over to the machine and you're going to sew a quarter inch seam along the edge here on this short end. You can pin it, I usually don't, um, but again, short end, quarter inch seam. So you can see my quarter inch seam there and now we'll want to go over, I turn it, leave it right sides together and turn it this way. And we're going to go over to the iron and if I can make it happen here, <laughs> we are going to press this seam open just to make it flat. Try not to press the edges of your tomato, but just press that seam flat in the center there. So you can see there that we have pressed that seam open flat. And our next step is going to be to gather the bottom of the tomato. So you're gonna to wanna to get your upholstery thread, thread your needle. I prefer a longer sharp needle, not too thick. Make sure you've got a decent sized knot in the end of your thread so that as you are gathering your tomato, you won't, um, the knot won't slip through the fabric. So I start about a quarter to oh, five eighths of an inch in from the edge, the raw edge of the fabric. I go into the seam like so and I go ahead and I'm gonna make some big basting stitches all the way around the bottom of the pumpkin, of the tomato. <laughs> so you can see there's my knot. And I'm just gonna continue making basting stitches. You don't have to make them one at a time. I actually rock my needle in and out and start gathering the uh, fabric onto the needle when it gets a little too full then I go ahead and pull it through. You can see my my stitches there. They don't have to be perfect. And you can see when I pull it, it gathers like that. So I'm going to continue making these stitches all the way around the base of the tomato. So as I make my way back around to the end where I started, I try and make one more stitch and come up through the uh, other part of the seam. And then here is where I'm not gonna unthread my needle. I'm gonna pull my upholstery thread tight. Almost looks like I'm making a little doll skirt. <laughs> Um, so I pull that, that, um, that upholstery thread really tight and um, that's what's great about this thread is you, I really have had no problems with it breaking at all. Um, so pull it tight and hold it in place and then I just make, I go through the seam there, pull through, leave a little loop. And here I'm just knotting off my thread. I pull it good and tight. If I want to make sure, I might do another um, loop and knot and pull tight. And then I just snip that there. All right. So the next step here, you can see what it looks like, is I'm going to go over to the machine. And you're going to want to do this part slowly um, so that you don't break your needle. <laughs> um, but about the same distance, about a quarter to five eighths of an inch from this raw edge where your basting line was, you are going to just stitch back and forth across this end to really secure this and uh, so that when you're stuffing your tomato, you're not going to have any stuffing or race or anything leaking through. So let's go do that. 
so there you can see I've sewn that little seam back and forth multiple times. Um, make sure that you secure your ends. Go slow. You may need a heavier duty needle, depending on your machine. Um, and it's kind of either right along that basting line or just inside that basting line. And that's where we're going to stitch it closed. Your next step is going to be to take that tomato and we're going to turn it right side out. So you can see here, we've got a really cute little gathered bottom of the tomato. And we now have a little cup-like shape here that we're going to continue turning into a tomato. All right, our next step is to take our uh, upholstery thread and needle again with a nice size knot in the end. And we're going to do a very similar thing to what we just did with the bottom uh, edge of the tomato. You're going to, again, find your, your pressed seam and insert your needle about the same distance from the raw edge, about a quarter to five eighths of an inch. And once again, you're going to gather all the way around this raw edge of your fabric to start gathering the top of your tomato. So just like we did earlier, you're gonna, you can rock your needle back and forth and put in some basting stitches. I would say my basting stitches vary from a half an inch to a quarter inch. It is not very exact. It doesn't need to be. You just want to get those in there. And in some ways, I think uh, the less exact it is, the, the more personality your tomato has. So again, let's go all the way around our um, raw edge with our basting stitches and end up back at the seam. Now this time I have come back up through that flat seam, but I'm not going to knot my thread off right now. I'm actually going to leave my needle and uh, leave my needle threaded and set it down and it is still attached to the top of the tomato and this is the point where we're going to go ahead and fill it and then we'll be using the needle and thread to pull that um, gather that edge tight and then we'll tie it off then so first I take a handful of rice not a whole lot uh, just a little something to give it and I sprinkle that in the bottom might do a little bit more than that. You don't want too much rice because um, you want the top here to be the stuffing. I kind of shake it around and make it even. Uh, again, this is just to give some weight. You do not have to add this part. Um, you can do the whole thing with stuffing. I don't recommend sawdust for this particular tomato. Uh, just because you will end up with a small opening here at the top. It will be covered by the star, but I wouldn't want any um, of the sawdust or anything smaller to come out of here. So that's why I like to put the rice at the very bottom. And next, we'll start stuffing it with the polyfill. So I have myself a big old hunk <laughs> of polyfill here. And I'm just going to start putting in that first bit into my tomato. <laughs> See how much I can get in. And then I'm going to slowly start tightening with that thread that's still attached. I'm going to slowly start tightening the opening on the top of the tomato. And you can see it's real squishy right now. And um, so I'm going to essentially keep stuffing it and the more I stuff it, I gotta keep pulling the, the top. Once it gets a little fuller, I tend to grab a hunk with one hand. Takes a little, takes a little, these two. Grab a hunk, I'm holding the uh, upholstery thread gather taut, and I am taking pieces and bits of stuffing and really working it into 
the edges of that tomato. Sometimes I'll pull, push my finger down in the center um, and kind of spread that polyfill out towards the edges. And again, I gotta hold this upholstery thread and just keep stuffing until you're really happy with um, how full your tomato is. And you can see how nice and strong this upholstery thread is because um, I am stuffing this little tomato pretty full and it is um, it is really holding. So I kind of look around and poke it in there. Look at the bottom, how am I liking, how it looks. Feel around the edges. Decide if there's anywhere else you want to keep adding some stuffing. Be amazed how much stuffing you can get in this little tomato. My goal is to push it out around those edges. I feel like I've got mine pretty well as stuffed as I want it to be. Okay, I'm going to pull the top gathers really tight so you can see about how big I've left that hole. So it should feel pretty tight. Then with my needle that's still threaded, I'm going to hold it tight and I'm going to go through my gathers and I'm going to do much like I did on the bottom. I'm going to, while holding it tight, loop it through, hold it tight and knot off that, uh, those, that gathering thread. And again, just to make sure, I'm gonna pass it through one more time, maybe twice, <laughs> loop it through and knot it really tight and secure. And you'll see that's pretty, that is a really strong thread, so I don't think you'll have any problem with that. Trim it, and you have made the tomato part. All right, you can mess with it a little bit and fix your gathers if you want, but there you go. Next, we're gonna make the top of the tomato. All right, next we are going to make the star top, the leaf of our tomato. And so to do that, we're gonna need our squares of fabric. We're gonna take our two, about four inch squares of fabric, and we are going to layer them right sides together. And then we're gonna take our tomato star template and position it on the wrong side of the fabrics. And we're gonna trace around the tomato. You wanna make sure you have, you know, about a quarter of an inch. You don't want any of the points too close to the edge of the fabric. And we're gonna trace around the tomato. There's all kinds of sewing and quilting marking tools out there, um, but my favorite to use is just uh, you can get this at Walmart or on Amazon, your local grocery store. This is a Friction brand pen. It is erasable. And what's cool about it is um, it doesn't have a real eraser on the end. It has a almost like a stylus tip to it. And on paper, this would erase your lines. It's done with friction or with heat. Um, but I have used this these pens for a very long time in my quilting and sewing because once you heat them with an iron, the marking goes away. So I am gonna take my friction pen and I'm gonna trace around my template. This is a cardstock template, so it makes it just a little bit stiffer and easier to trace around. I'm gonna trace around all my edges a dark line there. All those edges. There we go. So you can see, traced my star. I'm not going to cut out this star. 
I'm going to show you a method to make this double-sided star and we're going to sew along these lines. I'll be right back with that. This is a method of creating a shape that um, would be very familiar to those of you who follow Lori Holt and have possibly used her so simple shapes and her method of applique. Um, I will link to a tutorial below that shows how to use her so simple shapes and to make um, shapes for applique on quilts and all sorts of things using her method. So this is a variation of that. Usually she would use a piece of fabric and some uh, sew in interfacing. But for our purposes here, we want a double sided topper. So I have my star and we are using instead of fabric and interfacing, we are using fabric and fabric. So I pin that together and I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to stitch on top of the line that I traced. So you take a slow, um, go real slow and stitch all the way around on top of the line of the star that you traced, remembering to backstitch both at the beginning and the end. Here we go. You can see that I have stitched right on top of my drawn line that I traced around the star. I've backstitched beginning and end here. And I just want to give credit where credit is due completely because this is not my method of creating a shape. This is Lori Holt from uh, Be In My Bonnet. This is her method and if it were not for Lori Holt and all that I have learned from her, I would not be the quilter, um, stitcher, crafter that I am today. So again, credit where credit is due. Thank you, Lori, for teaching me so much. Please go to the link below if you'd like more information about how to do her so simple shapes and make beautiful things, beautiful quilts. So with that said, now we're going to take our scissors, good fabric scissors, and you're going to trim about a quarter of an inch away from your stitch line on the ends, not too close. I like to make it flat at the points and then continue around doing, cutting you know, a quarter of an inch or so. <laughs> this does not have to be really exact. You're not going to see this. This flat. You can trim those a little bit. Keep trimming all the way around your star. Some are a little closer. It's not going to really matter. All right. So there you have your star shape. Okay. So now we're going to take our little star. And because we're going to be turning this, we want to clip these inside corners. Do not clip your seam. But that's why I use these really sharp pointed scissors to clip just almost to the stitching line, but not quite. So clip all your inside corners, just like so. Careful not to cut your stitching line. Okay, and just like Lori would do, I pull my shape. This is completely enclosed. We don't have a, so I'm kind of pull my shape apart and make sure that we're just grabbing one layer of fabric. I snip a little hole and you can see I made that hole in the one layer and I just cut a little opening in this one layer of my fabric. So I have a little, little opening. If you were following Lori and doing it with the um, interfacing, you would be cutting your hole in the interfacing. Again, I'll send you over to Lori so you can learn how to do that. Now I'm just going to turn my shape right side out. Okay, now I have a blob. <laughs> and we're going to use some sort of turner to go through the opening and gently poke out those 
points of the star. Not too hard, you don't want to poke through your point. Uh, that's why sometimes I like to use something like this or even a crochet hook at the very beginning here to get that pushed out because you need a little more force right here to make that star nice and pretty. Nice. Then I may come back with my clover turner here and very, very gently, because you can poke through, um, I have done it, you can poke all the way through your fabric and then you gotta make it again, um, but very, very carefully um, poke those corners out. That was nice and they should be a little bit rounded. They're not gonna be perfect points. Great, love that. So see how I'm really very carefully, very slowly, almost trying to get on that underside of the seam to push it. And there, we're gonna leave that hole in the back just like that, because you're not gonna see it. That is gonna be the top side of your star leaf. Again, thank you, Lori, for making it possible. I'm gonna go over to the iron and press this nice and flat and then we'll be back. All right, so now we have our star pressed nice and flat. We're gonna set that aside for just a moment because at this point, we're gonna take our tomato and our thick uh, yarn or floss, or like I said, this is a cotton chunky thread from Lori Holt, available on Fat Quarter Shop. And I am gonna pick a nice long piece okay of my yarn or thread nice and thick for this one I am gonna need a tougher thicker needle I don't know where I got this but it is a giant needle um, and it's gonna work great for what we're gonna do so it has a nice big eye that I can get this um, thicker thread or floss through. Get that loaded into our our big fat needle. I'm going to make sure I knot that really well. Oops. Knot that really well in the end. Nice big fat knot because again we do not want this slipping through. Okay so what we're going to do is I'm gonna go with my big needle down through the center of my tomato. And I'm gonna turn it over. And it's gonna take a little bit of work. It's really thick. But I'm gonna, as close to the center as I can, I'm gonna search around and find a way to get that needle up through the center. Pull it through and your knot should be catching way down in there. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna wrap it around one side and I'm gonna go again down through the center and come back up. So as you can see, now, I have a cute little um, piece of yarn here. Now, here is the one I just put through. I'm gonna wrap it exactly opposite of, so it's coming up this way, of the tomato. I'm gonna go down through the center again. And, them up <laughs> through the center at the bottom and so I should have um, two lines of yarn or floss that are exactly opposite you can see one here and one here coming through okay I'm gonna pull that just a little bit make it cute now I'm gonna come across I'm essentially dividing the tomato into fourths. You can see here 
I've used that floss to divide my tomato into four little sections. So here's the two I've already done. So I'm making another fourth. And I'm going to go again down through the middle and up. Oh, that's kind of hard. Got to kind of play around with it until you find a spot you can pull it through. Up through, or down through the bottom. And take a minute to just arrange it so that they're even. And last time, we're going to wrap it around that last fourth and again go down through the middle and come up the bottom super easy okay so you can see that I use that floss or that thread to divide it into um, four sections and you now I actually pass it back through, come up through the top, you can see, oop, there's my tail, come on, pull my tail through, there we go. So you can see what it looks like on the bottom, and if you don't like the way it's pulling through, but once you start tightening it, you really are going to see how your floss looks. And then what I do here is I, I come up underneath one of those pieces of yarn. I'm very much like I did on those basting stitches. I'm just looping it under, passing it through, and, and knotting that off. You can do that again if you need to, but that should hold pretty secure. Now, you can trim that, and we're done. So now you have, um, divided that tomato into sections and you won't see any of this underneath your star. So next you're going to need your star and your button and some more of your um, upholstery thread on a needle. We're getting close to a finish here. All right now we are at our final step here. We're going to attach our star leaf to the top of our tomato. We've got our button. So again, I've got my upholstery thread on my needle, a good knot in the end. I'm going to turn over my um, star and I'm going to come up through the bottom where that cut is. It's just the bottom. Okay, so there's my thread. I'm going to thread my button under my needle. Pull that down here. And you're going to just, um, you know, get your button centered. And we're going to sew on our button just a couple times around before we move on further. So let's get that button just sewed on. Okay, maybe one more. Leave your needle threaded and in there, okay? Because now we're gonna take our star with the button and we're gonna thread through here to attach it. Okay, so we still have our needle and thread attached to our star with its button and I am gonna go back down through the center of my tomato. Go down to the bottom center. This should be a little bit easier because your needle isn't so big. Well, I said that. Where are you? Here it is. Okay, I've got to poke around. Oh, there we go. Come up. I kind of have to squish it a little bit. Pull my needle, and my star is going to start getting closer. There we go. Center your star where you want it on your tomato. Okay, your thread is still, so cute, your thread is still on the bottom, so flip it, pull it just a little bit, make it sure it's nice and close, and we're going to come up right again through the middle. Now here you're going to have to search a bit, play around, it's like, 
your blind here. Oops. And I have to try multiple times to here and get it to come up through your one of your buttonholes there. Occasionally I have to grab it with a little pair of pliers or my scissors to pull that needle on through up from the bottom. Pull it nice and tight. Not too tight. If you pull it too tight, you're going to really um, make that tomato star all crunched up and ruffled and you don't really want it like that. You want it tight so that it's not going anywhere, um, but not so tight that it starts to buckle. Okay, so you've come up. Let's go down through the other hole and down through the bottom. You could be done here. Oops, see how if I pull it too tight, it gets all rumpled. So I'm going to come up one more time. Hopefully it's easier this time. One more time. Through a hole. Pull that through. Make sure it's not too tight. You can have this moment here to adjust it. A little bit's fine. And down one last time through the bottom. There it is. Careful. Pull it through. And make sure before you knot it off, you've got it just like you want it in place. Really cute. Now we're going to come back and once again pass it through a fold of the fabric with a loop. Go through the loop and knot that off. And trim. Oopsie. Trim. I'm done with your thread. Now we have one last stop to finish up our tomato. So grab your glue gun and let's finish. All right, our last step is going to be to um, hot glue under each point of our star leaf. So get your glue gun nice and hot and ready to go. And I just lift up my leaf and put a little blob of hot glue here. Let it sit for a minute before I start pulling away and press it down. Then I move around to my next point. Give that a dot of glue. Let it sit before I pull away and press down. And I'm going to repeat that for all five of the star points. So now I've got all five of my points hot glued down. I'm going to go back and pull off any of my little my glue strings and make sure I'm happy with how they're all laying. You can always add a touch more glue if you want, but really those uh, dots of hot glue on the four or five points should be enough to hold it. And that is it. You are done with your super cute tomato. Trim up any threads and make it look perfect. And this is just so much fun to play with. You can have so many different options for your tomatoes, colors, styles. Uh, feel free to start messing around with the size of the tomato or the size of the star. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun to make these increasingly bigger and stack um, three different sizes of tomatoes. I've yet to do that. So um, you've made a tomato. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer those. And thank you for being so patient with me as I film this first tutorial. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I can't wait to see your tomatoes. You can follow me on Instagram at Celeste Creates. And do tag me if you make a tomato. Please um, like this video and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully in the coming months, I will show you how to use a very similar method to make pumpkins of all 
shapes and sizes. Um, actually, my tomato tutorial, how I make these tomatoes, um, was based off of how I made my pumpkins years ago, and that's still a fun, real fun craft to do. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. This tomato is going to be gifted to your friend, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day, and happy tomato making.